A dream home should be designed and constructed in such a way that it fulfills the needs of your family. A layout should be planned so that it keeps you happy and designed keeping your future planning in mind. From the size of the bedrooms to the layout of the kitchen, everything is pre-planned within a layout so you feel comfortable in your home. To turn this feeling of comfort into reality, we present to you our special series. New Voco presents Dream Home Celebrations, a News 18 initiative. We are here to not only give you information, but touch upon every single aspect which is necessary to build your dream home. What could be the look of your house, inside and outside, needs special attention. The layout design of your house illustrates what it will look like after it is built. To get those designs down to a planned map is of great importance when building a home of your dreams. So the layout is basically a 2D drawing which shows the entrance, how the, uh, how the entrance is, then how do you enter into your living room, bedroom, kitchen, the entire floor area. Design development is the next step once the layout is finalized. Layout finalization is very, very important. Once the layout is finalized, then architect jump onto the design development. Now, how this design development happens is your 2D drawing takes a shape of 3D. So how the elevation of the entire house is going to look like, how the internal areas are going to look like, how the staircase will go up, the walkthrough is very conveniently possible. It's very much normal practice these days in everywhere industry. When it comes to the layout of your dream home, it is important to keep in mind that every space and every corner of your house should be designed as per the proper proportions, scales and sizes. Only then will your home be both beautiful and suitable for you to live in. I think when you are working on smaller individual houses, it's very important to understand how to maximize the plot or what the requirements for the client is. When it comes to proportion of spaces, there are many ways to approach it. The easiest way to sort of get a mathematical ratio is to apply the golden ratio. I think just as a very simple example would be that uh, if you're in a very narrow room which is extremely tall, you're gonna feel a little uncomfortable, you know, in a certain way versus being in a more perfectly proportioned room which makes you feel more relaxed. Simple things like room proportions can psychologically make you feel better which make you sort of perform better in that space. When it comes to your dream home, the layout is as important as deciding how your house is going to look on the outside. It is crucial to understand what your home is going to look like from the front, the rear and its sides which are part of its design elements. The elevation is how your building looks, frankly. It does not depict the inner strength of the building, but it could have a particular style, like somebody could say that I want my building to look maybe some retro style, some, somebody would say look like a Victorian bungalow, somebody could say I want some Roman elements added to it, somebody would say I want exposed brickwork, somebody would come and say that yes, I want uh, routine old type of tiles to be put on the roof. So all these are the choice of the owners and again the, uh, the geometry and the scale of all these factors should be complementing the type of the structure. Normally an elevation is just a cladding. It is something you add on to it. It has mostly cosmetic appeal you can say. It does not in any way contribute to the strength of the building. You are trying to build a house in Guwahati where the rainfall is a lot and you will find instead of flat roofs, a sloping roof is required to ensure proper drainage or runoff of the water. But in this case also, it is possible to hide that the slope of that building. You could model your elevation in such a way that the slope is not seen from all sides. So you could have a totally plain or a square or a rectangular elevation to your buildings. This could easily be done by adding some parapets, etc. things. Like for example, my house is like this and I have a slope going here. So if I build a parapet here in this particular area, then from the outside it is going to look square. People will not be able to know unless they come inside whether it is sloping or whether it's flat. So your elevation could make your building look different than what it actually is. So in this way you could maintain the aesthetics of the house and also uh, not compromise on the functionality of uh, the building. 
Elevation should always go with the environment and it should always blend with nature. For an example, अगर हम आसाम का देखते हैं नॉर्थ ईस्ट का देखते हैं वहाँ पे इट्स लाइक वी फाइंड हैवी रेनफॉल वहाँ के जो घर होते हैं दे हैव स्लोपिंग रूफ इफ वी सी टूवर्ड्स कश्मीर जहाँ पे बहुत ज़्यादा स्नोफॉल अर्थ होता है वहाँ का आप स्लोप देखोगे इट्स लाइक मोर लाइक दिस इफ वी सी टूवर्ड्स द वेस्टर्न पार्ट बिकॉज ऑफ द हीट एंड समर दे टेंस टू स्लीप ऑन दे टेरिस सो वहाँ का रूफ यूजली फ्लैट रखा जाता है सो एलिवेशन प्लेज अ मेजर रोल वाइल डिजाइनिंग अ स्पेस और अ हाउस The elevation of a house is almost like an advertisement to what's inside. As a designer, we tend to think little bit too dimensional, which becomes a 2D elevation and then that gets 3-dimensionally built. I'll try and give you a few examples with a few simple diagrams. Say this is the elevation, the front view of your house. So, it's a fairly large sort of a elevation. We've got like a door over here. We've got a series of windows which could be in different shapes you can have windows in square arches geometric shapes i mean there's no real limit and here we have say these long slender windows which add up so these elements over here what you're seeing are what start defining your elevation and these can respond to the design style that you need uh, there are so many other aspects in this like say for example there's a lot of sun that comes on this side of the house we're going to try and add a chhajja over here to sort of like reduce that uh you're going to try and add maybe a screen like a jali what you see in lot of traditional indian havelis you know these jalis were actually very functional from a climatological aspect beyond design so a lot of these features they come together and they define your elevation and this is completely up to you of how a uh, minimal or detailed or you know in a word how crazy you want it to be that would be very much up to you when building your dream home up until now you must have gotten an idea about the layout and elevation but before locking the plans and design on paper it's important to keep a few other technical things in mind while building it there are conditions on the plot also which he needs to understand while taking forward for a construction now let me give you an example there is a plot of land which the person wants to construct upon now this is abutting a road for example and there is a setback which is reserved or or a reservation put on the regional plan or by the local bodies uh, for for that area or a zone now this is the plot this is the road and this is the setback area now a person needs to be aware that when there is a setback area that area can be called to be surrendered by the government any time in future so when construction plans are put up the setback area has to be taken into consideration and construction cannot happen onto the setback area the person should be aware of what is a boundary line for starting the project construction and in suppose the fs and fir calculations also depend upon this kind of a setback area so while there are balconies or anything which are proposed in the project which may be jutting out beyond the boundary line a person needs to know what are the consequences of such construction the trend many times becomes that people try to avoid some columns or, or try to pick lesser columns this is what we call as lesser redundancy in the structure redundancy is like when you have adequate number of columns uh, to take an example when i am having five columns and there is an earthquake and one of the columns there fails so there i have only four remaining columns and if they are not adequately interconnected also you will find that these remaining columns will not be able to help in picking up the structure or holding it stable but in the other way around if i am having 10 columns and they are again adequately interconnected with each other then you will find that when there is an seismic event and there is some weakness in the structure maybe one or two columns are not behaving as they should be then you will find that the remaining eight columns will come together and help in distributing this load to other areas and generally you will find that your building remain stable in spite of all these seismic actions 
people would like to have uh, what we generally in uh, structural terms call it as cantilevers where your beams etc are supported only on one side the other side is free and hanging and it is cantilevering out or projecting out from your main structure a lot but these are very critical areas of your building and they should be properly calculated generally the is code would specify a limit for the deflections but cantilevers would tend to deflect a lot more than a conventional beam it is as as much as four times and all these deflections are going to affect your structure they could lead to cracks suppose i am building a column free structure and uh, my spans are huge 10 meters though the code will allow me a deflection of 40 mm the moment there is a deflection of 40 mm in my structure it is going to affect the serviceability of my structure like my tiles are going to break my wires are going to be a little disconnected because of all this my windows could uh, break or windows could see some cracks along the edges my sills would break so we have to be very careful when it comes to designing our home we can't trust just anyone apart from the experts the architect designs the house and most of the times for the interiors of the house the owner hires an interior designer Usually these experts work by themselves but for them to be on the same page is very important while building your house Whenever I design something I always consider comfort as the one of the primary thing of the space Interior designing for me is combination of comfort culture and functionality of a space which blends with the architecture to provide a aesthetically beautiful area to live in it also depends on the client and the requirement of the client as well the material the geography the topography climate everything once you enter your space enter the bedroom or the living space you just want to relax sit down and just be comfortable over the area so that is comfort in the interior designing is for example if you're going for a very indian ethnic look lot of the detailing that you're going to use in your house by detailing i mean like say a water fountain or the way your landscape features are done the way uh, you've got uh, your window detailing the jalis in the house they will all be features which are following a certain indian style to bring that indian ethnic look to your house if you want to do a very modern sort of a style a lot of these design features are going to be more streamlined more modern more true to the material while the construction work is going on owner ne interior and furniture ke bare mein zarur sochna chahiye because agar ye activity simultaneously ho jati hai to there will be a substantial cost reduction If you are planning for good furniture inside the house, आपको अच्छा किचन बनाना हो बेडरूम एस्थेटिकली अच्छी करनी हो यू शुड साइमल्टेनियसली थिंक ऑफ इंटीरियर डिजाइनर हु विल बी अ पार्ट ऑफ योर प्रोजेक्ट On this journey of building your dream home, you will have to go through a lot of important processes and work with a lot of people. It is critical for you to know what necessary steps need to be taken and the importance of teamwork during this phase of construction. Many times in a project you have an architect who has designed the house but the client wants to hire a separate interior designer to bring a different approach to the interior of the project. There are multiple ways to approach such projects usually the architect and the interior designer they tend to have a few meetings jointly with the client to understand what was the concept used by the architect on basis of which he's designed the whole look of the project and that includes all the wall surfaces the elevations of the house the volumes inside the house once that is sort of understood and what common mutual style has to be followed the interior designer would try and reflect either the language of the house which is shown in the elevations the features like the balconies the windows they have certain design styles to them they would be reflected with the interior of the house through the materials and the way the interior design process is done while doing the layout of the project or the plot itself there has to be an adherence to the local building bylaws as also the development regulations building bylaws are issued in every area by every planning authority or the local body in the particular area or the region aap construction jab karte ho to architect basically who is responsible for main structure designing 
then interior designer who is into a planning of all fixed furniture inside the house and contractor who is going to execute all the two activities together there should be a proper teamwork between these three until now we have spoken about the external design of your dream home and the multiple processes around it after this break we will talk about some more key aspects that will make your home versatile, long-lasting and beautiful.